overpowering emotion felt, becomes a beacon reminding us what to avoid and helping shape our interactions. This combination of forgiveness and memory is the compass guiding us through the complex constellation of relationships. Bearing these thoughts in mind, I ask you to reflect on your journey through this celestial dance of relationships. Who are the stars that shine brightly for you, and who are the black holes you need to avoid? Use your forgiveness as fuel to propel you forward and let your memory help you navigate to avoid repeating the same patterns. In this intricate ballet of life, let us aspire to be the spaceship that forges its path through cosmic chaos with refined grace, driven by the power of forgiveness and guided by the wisdom of memory. Emotional Stability Navigating life surrounded by toxic individuals can feel like trekking through a dense fog. You lose sight of where you're headed, and every step feels uncertain. But what if I told you there's a way to clear the fog? It starts from within, through the strength of emotional stability cultivated by stoicism. Think of that one person who, no matter the chaos, never seems ruffled, like a mountain standing firm against a raging storm. This isn't about being indifferent or cold. It's about recognizing that the only thing truly under our control is how we respond to the outside world. Stoicism teaches us that our power lies in our reaction, not in trying to control the uncontrollable. So when faced with toxicity, channel your inner stoic. Instead of engaging in the drama, pause. It's like being in the eye of the hurricane. Everything's wild on the outside, but here it's calm. This space allows us to breathe, think, and then act from a place of rational calmness. It's about shifting focus from what's happening around us to how we're going to let it affect our inner peace. And how do we do this? By practicing mindfulness. Yes, it's a term tossed around a lot these days, but here's the thing. It works. Mindfulness lets us detach, observe the chaos, without getting sucked in. It's not about ignoring the toxicity, but acknowledging it without letting it dictate our peace. It's realizing that, much like clouds in the sky, these moments will pass. So the next time you find yourself in the midst of negativity, remember, you're the architect of your peace. Build it strong. Setting Boundaries Imagine stepping into a world where every interaction you have is like a brushstroke on the canvas of your day. Some strokes are vibrant and uplifting, enhancing the beauty of your existence. Then there are those strokes, dark, heavy, and inconsistent, left by toxic people in your life. These interactions don't just leave a mark. They alter the entire masterpiece of your day, your mood, and even your self-perception. Now think about the ancient Stoics. They were masters of their own minds, not by avoiding adversity but by fortifying their inner walls. They knew that not every opinion, critique, or negative energy deserved their attention. What if I told you that dealing with toxic people could be approached with the same stoicism? It's not about building an impenetrable wall, but about choosing which gates to open and when. This selective openness doesn't make you less of a person. It makes you a curator of your own peace. Picture your energy as a limited, precious resource like water in a desert. Every interaction you engage in is like giving a drop of that water away. Now would you rather give it to someone who plants seeds in your desert, making it bloom, or to someone who lets it evaporate under the scornful sun? Setting boundaries is about investing your energy wisely, not with arrogance or disdain, but with the calm resolve of a stoic who knows his worth and the value of his time. It's about calmly communicating. This is where I draw the line because your peace is not up for negotiation. So, let's move forward with this mindset. View each day as an opportunity to paint your masterpiece, to invest your energy where it grows wonders. Remember, respecting yourself enough to set boundaries is not an act of aggression. It's an act of self-respect and wisdom. Start today, not by cutting people out, but by delineating where your garden ends and the wild begins and watch how the landscape of your life transforms. If this video is resonating with you, let us know in the comments and give it a like to spread its message. Don't forget to hit subscribe for more insights. Energy Intelligence 
Ever find yourself in the presence of someone whose energy feels like a thunderstorm, turning your sunny day upside down? Navigating the choppy waters of interactions with toxic people can test even the calmest of minds. But let's turn the lens inward and explore the concept of energy intelligence as our compass. Think of your energy as a protective barrier, much like an ancient city wall, something that preserves your inner sanctuary, your peace. This wall isn't about shutting. It's early morning, and as you sip your favorite coffee, scrolling through your messages, you're suddenly jolted awake by harsh words, like a splash of cold water, someone's unkind comment or rude gesture. Just like that, your day feels a little dimmer. We all face the challenge of dealing with toxic people, but how we respond can completely change the situation. Have you ever noticed how a single negative comment can stick in your mind longer than a compliment? It's like a stubborn stain on your favorite shirt that just won't come out. But here's where your power lies, in recognizing that stain and choosing not to let it ruin your shirt or your day. It's about understanding that these harsh moments say more about the other person's internal struggles and insecurities than they do about you. In his meditations, Marcus Aurelius shared a timeless insight. When someone blames or hates you, or voices criticism, delve into their soul, see who they really are, and realize there's no need to be anxious about their opinion of you. This perspective encourages us to look beyond surface interactions and grasp the deeper motivations behind others' actions. Confronting negativity also presents a unique opportunity for self-reflection. So, I challenge you to look inward, peel back the layers of expectations and societal masks, and uncover the truths about yourself that have been overshadowed by others' judgments. Are you letting someone else's negativity define your day or your self-worth? Let's embark on this journey of self-discovery together, finding ways not only to deal with toxic individuals, but also to strengthen our sense of self. Self-awareness Think of someone in your life who seems to push all the wrong buttons. We often label these people as toxic because their negativity spreads like smoke, making it hard to see clearly. But what if I told you there's a way to clear the air and navigate through the smoke without losing your way? It all begins with self-awareness. Just as knowing you're allergic to smoke makes you avoid it, understanding your responses to toxic people empowers you to keep your emotional distance. It reminds me of a lesson from an old fencing master who taught his students that the real skill in fencing wasn't just in attacking, but in knowing precisely when to dodge. Each time a toxic person lashes out, Picture yourself executing a perfect sidestep. You don't absorb the blow because you're aware of your own boundaries and respect them enough not to let anyone cross. This doesn't require anger or a counterattack, just a quiet, unshakable knowledge of who you are. Incorporating this understanding into daily life isn't as hard as it might seem. Think of it like tying your shoes. At first, it requires focus, but eventually it becomes second nature. When dealing with negativity, Take a step back and ask yourself, why does this bother me? Or, what can I learn from this? These questions aren't about making excuses for others, but about reinforcing your own mental strength. Understand that this path won't be obstacle-free. Navigating the smoke of others' negativity with self-awareness isn't a fairy tale. There will be days when it feels easier to just react, to throw back what was thrown at you. But that's a fleeting victory one that feels hollow, because it betrays who you are. Each time you choose to respond rather than react, remember you're doing it not because it's easy, but because it's right for you. This is about building a fortress within yourself, not from arrogance, but from a place of strength and calm. It's not about ignoring the negativity, but acknowledging it without letting it dictate your actions. Embrace the challenge. It sharpens you makes you more resilient, and in the long run, undeniably stronger. Forgiveness and Memory Look up at the sky. Do you notice how stars shine bright, despite the surrounding darkness? Think of these stars as the people who add value to your life, illuminating your path with understanding and empathy. On the other hand, you may encounter black holes, 
representations of toxic individuals who pull you into their darkness, draining your joy and energy. So, how do you navigate this cosmic dance of relationships without getting sucked into these black holes? Picture yourself as a spaceship, fueled not by hydrogen but by courage and wisdom. This courage is your forgiveness, the power that absolves people of their faults and lets you soar higher than any toxic influence. It disentangles you from the gravity of resentment that chains you to painful memories and grudges. Yet every spaceship needs a navigational system. This is your memory, the keeper of life's lessons, the silent whisper in your ear, reminding you to take a detour when a known black hole looms in your flight path. Our past encounters with toxicity aren't shackles. They are points on a star map, guiding us towards safer orbits. Every lesson learned from dealing with a toxic individual, every, others out. Rather, it's about understanding and managing your emotional and psychological resources. Imagine you're holding a glass of water. That glass is your energy for the day. If you let toxic people drink from it unchecked, you'll soon find yourself drained with nothing left for those who genuinely matter. That's where energy intelligence comes in, guiding you to decide where, when, and to whom to allocate your emotional resources. This doesn't mean you abandon compassion or understanding. It means you become strategic with your empathy. Picture it like tending to a garden. You water the plants that need it the most, the ones that will thrive and bear fruit. But you don't waste water on weeds. In the same way, energy intelligence encourages you to discern which relationships and interactions deserve your time and emotional investment. It's about realizing that just as a garden can't flourish without proper care, your well-being can't thrive if you're constantly giving away your energy to negativity. With this in mind, I encourage you to think about your energy levels like a bank account. Invest wisely, spend carefully, and save where necessary. The better you become at managing your energy, the less power toxic people will have over you. Your inner peace will no longer be at their mercy, but under your control, making your interactions more meaningful and your life more fulfilling. If you found this video helpful, please like and comment your thoughts below. Don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. Conclusion As you move forward, let these principles become your foundation in navigating the complexities of human interactions. Remember, it's not about changing others, but about strengthening yourself. Embrace self-awareness, forgiveness, and emotional stability as your guides, and build boundaries with energy intelligence. This way, even in the face of toxicity, you can maintain your peace, because you are the curator of your own experience. Let's cultivate a life where our inner world remains serene, no matter the storm raging outside.